Please be seated. This court is called to order. The parties are present. Trial counsel, are you ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. The prosecution calls Captain Liam Lawrence to the stand. Liam Lawrence? Go ahead, and before you sit down, if you could just stand and raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that you, the evidence you shall give in the case now in hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, to help you God? I do. All right, go ahead and take a seat. Please state your name, rank, and unit. Liam H. Lawrence, Captain, Information Warfare Analysis Squadron. And what was your previous unit? The 27th Special Operations Logistics Readiness Squadron. And what was your position within that, at the LRS? The Material Management Flight Commander. And do you know Airman Castle? Yes. How do you know Airman Castle? Airman Castle was one of the members of the supply flight in the 27th SOLRS. Do you remember when you started working with him? In October 2022. And how was he as a worker? I'm understanding that Airman Castle's performance was middling, if poor. And was he showing up to work? Not familiar with the end of 2022. I know beginning of 2023 he was not coming to work. And how do you know that Airman Castle wasn't showing up to work? I was informed by his flight leadership, or his section leadership, my apologies. And specifically, do you remember if Airman Castle was showing up to work between 1 March 2023 and 10 April 2023? He was not. Was he using leave at that time? I know that Airman Castle had used some leave. He exhausted it, and the days that he was absent from work were not covered totally by his leave. And how do you know that he was, when he was using leave? He was using leave based off of leave web and then conversation with his section leadership as well. So let's talk about the actions leadership took to address Airman Castle's misconduct. Do you know whether leadership took any action? Yes. His action was addressed by the section leadership, the flight leadership, and the squadron leadership. And what were those actions that leadership took? Those actions were verbal counselings, administrative action, Article 15. And once those didn't work, did the commander do anything to try to get him to show up to work? The commander gave Airman Castle both verbal and written orders clearly outlining his expectations. Did any of the supervisors remind him of that order? Yes. And how did they remind him of that order? They reminded him of the order both prior to, via text or email, phone call, and then when in violation of the order, notifying Airman Castle that he was in violation of the commander's order. Did Airman Castle show up to work once given that order? No. Did you provide any guidance to your NCOs on interacting with Airman Castle when he didn't show up to work? Yes. I advised them to provide the same clear, consistent expectation to Airman Castle so there was no confusion between any of the levels of leadership as to what the expectations were. And was there a reason that you told your NCOs to be formal with him and to use exact language? Yes. I wanted to ensure that there was no confusion between any echelon of leadership as to what those expectations were and that they mirrored what the commander had laid out in his verbal and written order. And do you know what the unit eventually did when the Article 15 and the order weren't effective? My understanding is that Airman Castle was held in pretrial confinement. Were you involved in that process? I was involved in some of the preliminary conversations regarding that being a possibility, but not in execution. So you didn't know when it was going to be executed? I had a rough idea. Let's talk about being disrespectful to Colonel Vasquez. What do you know about that? I'm aware of several instances where Airman Castle was disrespectful to Lieutenant Colonel Vasquez. Could you go into that? I understand during his personal appearance for the Article 15 that it was cut short due to Airman Castle's behavior at that time. Counsel, I'm going to interject. 
Captain, you said that it's your understanding. Were you present for that? No. Okay. No, ma'am. Trial counsel, move on, please. Yes, Your Honor. What was your uh, stance on uh, people getting mental health or reaching out for mental health? I think it's an incredibly important asset. I appreciate that AFSOC has the resources available that they do. Uh, with Ms. Erica Bond, the True North representative being uh, both within the material management supply flight, uh, being readily available at commander's calls, whatever it may be, it was an excellent resource uh, for everyone in the unit. I think it's something that should be absolutely taken advantage of. And would you say your stance is in line with the unit's stance on mental health? Absolutely. What would you say the unit's stance is? i say that the commander's direction is very clear, that it's a valuable resource, that it's used. I think an example of that is having the mental health folks present at every commander's call so the commander has an opportunity to highlight both the resources, what's available, and the importance of it. And do you know of Airman Castle uh, using any of these resources? To my knowledge, Airman Castle used uh, on-base mental health facility as well as uh, met with True North representative. Did you learn any information from mental health or True North? I did not. Did Airman Castle provide you any documentation from any on-base or off-base uh, um, providers? Yes, Airman Castle provided me uh, with some documentation from an off-base provider. And, and what was that documentation? Uh, documentation was the provider's summary of what um, he had or could assess at that time during that meeting. Were there any diagnoses in, the, in those documentation? Not that I was aware of. Um, you said you mentioned uh, that you knew Aaron Castle was going to medical and mental health. Uh, was it your understanding that they would tell leadership if there were any issues? That is my understanding. Uh, no further questions, Your Honor. Defense counsel? Good morning, Captain Lawrence. Um, so you mentioned that you got involved, um, you know, uh, on direct examination uh, by way of his supervisor, Master Sergeant Carey, you, getting you involved. That's correct. Um, and he got you involved at the end of January in 2023. As best I can hold. Yeah. Right. Um, and so. You supported his supervisor's um, opinions about what should be done in Senior McCastle's case. Supported the decisions, yes, that the flight made. Okay. Uh, you supported his supervisor's decision to give two LORs the same day in December 2022. I was not aware of two LORs in December. As I mentioned, it, I was notified of this situation at the end of January 2023. Okay. Um, but you were certainly aware at the time that there were several MFRs in his PIF about his about Senior Man Castle's aggression or confrontation with several members in the unit. Yes. Okay. Um, and you knew that your people were writing MFRs about uh, Senior McCastle's uh, failure to go. Yes. Meaning, you know, failure to come to work. Yes. Okay. Um, so you knew he wasn't showing up. Yes. You also knew that he was not jiving with Master Sergeant Carey. Yes. Meaning he wasn't getting along with Master Sergeant Carey. Yes. Their personalities were clashing. Yes. And you didn't actually intervene until 25 January 2023. I'm not remembering the exact date, but end of January sounds right. Okay. Um, and you actually were pretty hands off. Yes. Okay. On March, on 29 March 2023, um, you were supposed to be a mediator between Master Sergeant Carey 
and Senior McCastle at a feedback session. I don't recall the exact date, but I was supposed to be a mediator for the feedback meeting. Yes. Yeah. And that feedback meeting was a meeting to tell um, Senior McCastle about um, his EPR or EPB. Yes, it was to do uh, initial expectations. Initial expectations, or was it to actually tell him that he was not going to have a promote on his OPB? Um, the meeting that I'm familiar with was to do initial expectations. Okay. Uh, you had a meeting with him on 29 March 2023. I don't recall the date. Okay. Uh, if I showed you some text messages um, that you had with Master Sergeant Carey about that day, would that refresh mm -hmm. your recollection? Yes. Okay. One moment, Your Honor. Permission. <coughs> Is this Defense Exhibit Alpha? Yes, ma'am. I'm okay. um, handing the witness Defense Exhibit Alpha. Are you putting it back up on the screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay. If you need, Captain Lawrence, if you need to mm -hmm. come down to get closer to it to see, um, you may do so. All right, Captain Lawrence, has your recollection been sufficiently refreshed? Yes. Okay. Um, you remember having a meeting with Senior Urban Castle on 29 March 2023? Yes. Okay. And the same morning, uh, you were supposed to be that mediator at 0900 for Master Sergeant Carey and Senior Urban Castle to talk about this EPB. Yes. Okay. Um, and 0900 shows up, uh, comes around on that day, and Senior McCastle uh, doesn't show up. Correct. Okay. Um, and you text with Master Sergeant Carey about it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and you told Master Sergeant Carey, not surprising, uh, but you'd bet he still keep his 1100 with you. Yes. And then at 1100. Uh, Senior McCastle came to your office and chatted with you. He came to Tech Sergeant Crispin's office. Okay. And that's where you guys had your meeting. Correct. Okay. In that meeting, um, he actually tells you about some mental health concerns he has. Yes. In that meeting, he tells you that he feels like his brain is eat it, eating itself. I don't recall exactly, but that could be possible. Okay. And he tells you that he was afraid of Master Sergeant Carey. I don't call that specifically either, but it's possible. Okay. 
and he told you that he felt unsafe at work yes and you didn't tell the commander about what senior in castle told you in your meeting with him i had a conversation with the commander you had a conversation about the mental health concerns that senior in castle told you about um, I don't remember what was specifically addressed in that. I know that I back briefed the commander that we had a meeting with Aaron Castle and generally some of his concerns. Okay. You took everything he said, uh, that is Senior Aaron Castle said to you, um, and you generalized it and you told the commander about it. Yes. You had your own agenda that morning. It's true that you wanted to give Senior Airman Castle two LORs that morning. I had initially intended to give him two LORs, yes. That morning? That morning. Okay. But then the commander pulled it up to his level, and he issued the two LORs and the two orders on 31 March 2023. That's correct. Isn't it true that you didn't take Senior Airman Castle's mental health concerns or his workplace concerns with Master Sergeant Carey because you thought he was lying? That is not true. It's not true? You didn't think he was lying? No. Okay. You thought he was over-exaggerating? Yes. And you thought he was trying to weasel himself out of not coming to work? Yes. Not once did you think that he was someone who needed serious mental help? No. Not once did you recommend to the commander to conduct a fitness for duty assessment based on the behavior you witnessed? No. At that time, he had seen both on and off base providers, and I had not seen anything concrete that would warrant that. But you certainly knew that there was documented evidence that people thought he was aggressive. Yes? Yes. And you had documented evidence that people thought he was confrontational. Yes. And you had documented evidence that he was acting irrationally. I don't know that there was documentation stating that he was acting irrationally. did you have with Airman Castle between October 2022 when he came to work for you and when he was placed in pretrial confinement at the school? Maybe one. And that was one not related to discipline? Correct. Okay. Um, what was that one about? I don't recall him. Okay. If, um, go ahead. If, if anything, it would have been just in passing around the unit. At that time, how many people worked for you? 130. Okay. How many of them would you consider to have been, um, for lack of a better term, problem children? People that needed additional attention? Maybe 10 to 15. How many of those did you meet with personally? All of them. More than once? 
not all of them more than once. Did you only deal with those people based on discipline, or did you deal with them for anything else? Uh, dealt with them just in walking around the unit, uh, trying to see all the sections. I'd say the primary difference in Aaron Castle's case is that he was not in the duty center for me to communicate with. But he, do you know if he was responsive via text message and phone calls when people did try to contact him? Occasionally. Occasionally he was responsible or respon responsive or occasionally you were aware? Occasionally he was responsive. Did you ever try to reach out to him that way? Yes. Was he responsive? He was initially, ma'am. And when you say, wait, on our timeline, when is initially? Initially would be, by my best rec recollection, between the beginning of the year, January, and the end of March. So basically the entire period up until he was put in pretrial confinement. Uh, I guess I would say the middle middle of March. There was a period of time where Aaron Castle informed me he would no longer be communicating with me. Did he tell you why? He, I don't remember exactly. Uh, the impression was that I was harassing him. When did you first become aware that there might be mental health concerns with him? I was not aware that there were ongoing mental health concerns. I know that Aaron Castle had gone to providers, and based off what I had seen from the providers, there wasn't anything that indicated that he had a mental health condition. Okay. Was Master Sergeant Carey telling you that Aaron Castle was going repeatedly to mental health appointments? Uh, it was informed by uh, some of the other section leadership, Master and Carey, Aaron Castle himself. That he was going repeatedly? Correct. But you said that he, you were not aware that his issues were ongoing? I was not aware that there was a diagnosis or duty limiting condition or something of that nature. I was aware that he was going to the chaplain, to off base providers, to True North um, for resources. Okay, and understanding this is kind of a complex question, mm -hmm. but in your supervisory role, would you expect someone to have a mental health diagnosis before they would be allowed to have ongoing treatment? No, no ma'am. Okay. And based off my experience, Aaron Castle has provided ample opportunity to utilize those resources prior to any sort of diagnosis. Okay, but again, you were not intimately involved in those conversations with mental health? No ma'am. When he did not show up for that earlier appointment on the 29th of March, were you concerned? No, no ma'am. Why? At this point, he had not been to work for about three months. Uh, and based off the communication he had provided uh, that I was hearing through other sources, other members of the flight, uh, he had no intention of attending anything with Master and Carrie under any circumstance. Were you aware when Master Sergeant Carey was removed as his supervisor? Yes, ma'am. Did you notify Senior Man Castle directly that Sen uh, Master Sergeant Carey had been removed as his supervisor? I don't believe that I did. Understanding that it sounds like Airman Castle was telling you that he did not want to be where Master Sergeant Carey was, when you removed Master Sergeant Carey from the situation, why didn't you inform Senior Airman Castle? I don't recall, ma'am. Going to some questions that defense counsel just asked you. Um, you don't recall the specifics of that meeting um, when Airman Castle came to you about mental health concerns on the 29th of March. No, ma'am. But you do remember that he told you he felt unsafe at work? Yes, ma'am. Did you take that concern seriously? Yes, ma'am. What did you do about it? I uh, looked at all of the evidence that I had available at that time in conversations with the section leadership and sections with Master Gary 
uh, looking at some of the previous conversation history that I had access to. Uh, based off of that, um, in addition to the fact that Emmer Castle had not been to that duty center with Mass Sergeant Carey uh, for several months uh, and was not aware that Sergeant Carey was no longer physically in that office and then moved to a different building. Um, based off all of that, I assessed that there was no present danger. Did you tell him that? Yes. You yes, told him that Master Sergeant Carey was no longer his supervisor? I uh, told him that Master Sergeant Carey was no longer in that work center. Did you tell him Master Sergeant Carey was no longer his supervisor? I don't believe so. I believe the section leadership did. But you don't know for sure? I don't know for sure, ma'am. How many people have you supervised who have had um, mental health concerns? It's a complete guess, but I'd say 20 to 25. Have you believed others? Not all the time. What do you use to determine whether or not someone's being honest with you about mental health concerns? If they are utilizing the resources who are professionals in mental health, and those members, the resources are communicating to me that this member needs additional help. If it looks like they're making progress uh, in those areas that they're struggling with. Um, so if there appears to be good faith from the member that they're using those resources to get better, uh, then I tend to believe them. Okay. Um, if a member had concerns with mental health options on base, mm -hmm. Would you expect them to go elsewhere? If that's something they want to pursue, yes, ma'am. Did Senior Evan Castle ever talk to you about whether he was seeing people on base or off base? Yes, ma'am. And what was he doing? He had seen members both on and off base. Okay. And for the ones off base, are those the ones who provided you the document that you saw? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And the ones who provided you negative comments on his treatment, those were the ones on base? Negative in regards to? The, the reason you didn't believe him is he wasn't utilizing the resources properly? Uh, yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Council, do you have any follow-up based on my questions? No, Your Honor. Defense Council? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Trial Council, is Captain Lawrence subject to recall? Yes, Your Honor. Captain Lawrence, you are temporarily excused. As long as the court marshal is ongoing, do not discuss your testimony with anybody outside of Council for both sides or senior and mid-council. You're free to go back to your duty section for today, and if you are needed again for this court, the council will let you know when and where you need to go. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you.